I'm in the area this morning of where I live to sort of come out and have a little walk. Got a busy day ahead of us today, so I thought I'd uh, come out and get me exercise before heading out on a longer car journey. Don't know if you can hear the road to my side here. Uh, this is uh, like a walking area to keep people away from the road. Quite a nice area. So I'm just going to walk along this uh, path uh, and just yeah, get my daily exercise that way before heading off on this uh, car journey. Um, and I thought I'd talk about something I don't often talk about. Uh, well, you know, we talk about the cryptids and the paranormal side and all that. And I thought I'd talk about uh, ley lines. You know, because I, I, I do mention a lot about ley lines being, uh, you know, like in these areas that we go around and we go investigating. Um, so I thought I'd explain as well the sensations that we get on these ley lines, the, uh, the stories uh, and the folklore stories that we get running along these ley lines. Now, a lot of people don't think there's anything behind these lines. Where, uh, as I've been working on uh, or researching this uh, subject for the, since 2012, and I've come along a lot of lines that I've worked on with all these strange reports happening. And, it, you know, it, yeah, we, we do have um, reports here, there and everywhere that aren't on the lines, but it seems to be more prominent on the lines when we go and get reports and we go searching around them areas. Because we do look at the history of the land and uh, looking to see whether there's any lines along these uh, areas. I have a little map, a little Google map, which I've uh, set to private for myself. With, a lot, with lots of ley lines that I've looked into over the years. Some of them are only small lines. Some of them are quite large lines. There's one particular one that runs from one side of the country on the east to the, to the west side, um, up in the north of England. And I do often work around that line because it goes to an area. I believe Round Loaf itself, the burial mound up on Angles Art Moor, it has many lines coming off it. Now these lines always seem to coincide with things that happen around Winter Hill. Um, they're always in that area of the lines or sometimes in between two lines that are close together we get a lot of sighting reports, cryptid sighting reports, UFO sighting reports and I believe um, a lot of uh, the UFO sighting reports on these lines I think the UFOs or the UAPs or whatever you call, want to call them today uh, add along these lines and use maybe an energy grid within these lines that some people can pick up on myself being one of them I do pick up on these lines when we're on them and I do have a tendency to notice whether they're harsh lines which I think are male lines and uh, uh, softer lines, and I mean energies coming from these lines. Uh, the harder they are, the more male I think they are, and the softer the, the energy flow uh, re reproduces in my mind um, a female aspect to that line. <coughs> Excuse me. So what are ley lines? How do we look for ley lines? Or how do I look for ley lines? When I get a report in, I'll look at where it is on the map. And I like to know exactly where on the map the, this sighting has happened. Then what I do then is I'll look with my map, my own personal map 
of all the layer lines and I'll work out which one it's closest to. Not only that, I'll look and see whether there's any burial mounds, any standing stones, any stone circles, or anything high up on the ground. When I mean high up on the ground, I mean uh, uh, an high hill, what could have been a fort at one time, uh, especially if there's ancient villages that have been uh, found in archaeology around the area, especially around uh, like the Winter Hill area because we do have some ancient villages around there as well. And wherever there's ancient villages, and we know we've got standing stones, we know we've got burial mounds. Uh, so that's what I look for. Because when, it, when you're looking into the lines, you, it usually starts with five different sites in a line. Five or more, to me, is, is what I would say is a layer line, five or, five or more um, sides along a straight line. Now, when things happen and I get reports, sometimes there'll be places where things happen, which I believe we've got a male and a female line that swirl around other areas along this line. And they go through maybe a burial mound to the left of the line or um, and burial mounds to the right of the line and they'll follow them round and every so often they'll come to that line and they'll cross and you'll find there's usually folk stories or there's usually uh, things that have happened round there where people have reported strange things like the black shuck sightings is a well known one to, to be along these lines. So yeah, it's a, uh, I find it a fascinating subject. I always have done since uh, coming across it in, in 2012 and, and learning more about it. Because there's so much rich, you know, the, the British Isles are, are rich in folklore. And when you look behind the stories, in, you look at, uh, you know, like what has been reported with these stories and then, you know, in recent times I may get reporting which coincides with the folklore of that area. Now, when I was a child I used to wang around in an area of woodland not far from where I am today and we used to have a Everyone where I lived knew of the story of a, a, a horse called Juno, which we meant to run around these woods. And apparently he had a grave in these woods. Going back to medieval times, I think the story stemmed from, but it was a summer everyone used to talk to, you know, when they, I, I think the parents used it, well, when it said going dark, don't hang around in the woods or Juno's going to get you. And it was a three-legged horse that you could hear neighing within the woods. Now, as a child, we used to believe what our parents said because it wasn't far from a farm as well that had horses. So sometimes you'd hear the neighing of the horse and we'd automatically think this was Juno and we'd end up running home um, and getting a bit scared. So that sort of folklore in that, these areas. Now, this particular area, the, the oldest recorded ley line in Lancashire actually runs through that area where I used to live. And it runs through uh, an old hall called Hollyford, um, which meant all in the woods. Uh, and then it's been shortened to Hollyford, which is the estate I used to live on. So from that where Olivewood is, which was more or less the middle of this um, layer, uh, it came from Worsley Hood Hall, went through Olivewood, then went up to Cheatham Close Stone Circle. Now it was only recorded as being that length. I've not really looked in to see whether it stretches uh, further north or further uh, south. But 
being on that line and living around that area, we got a lot of strange things happening within that area where I used to hang around in the woods when I was there. Uh, you know, like, you know, six years onwards, and there was a place where everyone used to hang around in. It was a big wooded area, but at that time, you know, that, that was the time where we used to go out, um, you know, like, uh, first thing in the morning, and uh, we sort of know, we were always told, get back before, uh, before the lamps come on. So we were never late for tea or anything. We always used, I don't know, we used to know when to get back. And there were never any dangers like there is now or seems to be now. I, mean, I know we get it, all these reports in the, um, from the news about this happening and that happening. But was it that we were so naive then that we thought things like this weren't happening, which they probably were. And it's just that it gets reported more these days, so it seems the world is a lot more of a scary place than what it was when we were little. So yeah, on this line, again, I digress though. Um, on this line, it went through this area, and there were lots of things happening in this area. I actually saw, uh, and I think I was about 19 at the time, I saw what was an old Victorian housemaid um, outside this old, old hall, which would have been the kitchens at that time, uh, dressed with a, one of these soft hats, you know, like Victorian, what Victorian her servants would have worn. Um, stood there watching me as I walked past one evening. And this apparition it seemed solid to me um, I thought you know this was a real person I thought they were filming in the area because it's well known that a lot of filmmakers used to go there and uh, use it all uh, for the atmospheric um, dramas and and maybe some, some things are hauntings uh, I do know the most haunted uh, television series went there at one time so yeah it was well known for that and I, so I thought at the time they were doing some acting you know they were making a film until I went round the front and there were no nobody else there but the weird thing about it is before I saw the woman everything went really cold and I looked over and I saw the woman and she was staring at me. And I was a bit nervous and said, you know, hello. I didn't get an answer back, but she was still staring. And then at that point, I carried on walking and it warmed up again. And when I looked round, she wasn't there. I did go around the front to see whether there were any film, anyone making a film, but there wasn't. Uh, so I take that as seeing some sort of apparition that day in that area along that ley line. Now there's other stories of people who've heard horses, uh, horse noises, horse neighing, and um, <coughs> uh, what has no, been known in the area as uh, the uh, cavalier uh, on horseback, which is meant to appear at midnight on uh, Christmas Eve. I never saw it. I did go there a few times expecting to find it when I was uh, younger and never came across it. So, yeah, the, that was just my little area where I lived. We had lots of uh, ghost sightings, what people were talking about on the estate I lived uh, around this area of, of the hall. So I believe, yeah, there's a connection with layer lines. Uh, and paranormal sightings and UFO sightings, cryptid sightings, uh, anything unusual. There always seems to be an element to ley lines. Or in my case, from looking into ley lines, I tend to find that crossover uh, quite a lot. Yeah, we're on a small island. Yeah, we've got a lot of, uh, and I mean a lot of um, ancient sites, which these things uh, appear on. It's that connection with feelings as well, because people talk a lot about, uh, you know, the, how they felt when they 
come across these things. You know, the, the Oz factor, everything going quiet. And they all seem to connect with what happens on the ley line with folk stories as well. Um, and I remember when I was a child and playing in the woods um, and I was hearing the neighing of the horses and running off. Um, it's uh, almost, you know, twilight. You know, there's enough light to see, but, you know, you know within a, a, another half hour it's probably gone it's going to go dark so yeah it's a <laughs> it's a strange feeling when you're a child but when you're older you go around these places because I often go over um, to the area and, I, and have a look around the area <coughs> and yeah you do get or I have got strange feelings within that wooded area I don't know if it's uh, remembering what happened there when I was a kid um, you know, having these feelings of uh, being scared and running off and, you know, out with your mates and that, and that excitement of uh, the ghost stories around there, because we used to go around the hall at night and dare each other to go down a certain pair of steps that led down to it, towards what would have been the cellar of the place. And that excitement has sort of kept with me all these years because I still get that little bit of a excitement when we're out and about um, looking into all these accounts that I get. I enjoy that much that, you know, this is why I do what I do. Uh, but, I mean, it's gone. It's gone from uh, me wanting to talk about layer lines going up to uh, things that have happened in my past. Uh, let's get back to the ley lines. Uh, with that, uh, as I was saying, that, that was a short line uh, which used to run through the area where I was brought up. And then there's the longer ones, like I said, going from the east coast all the way to the west coast, uh, which run through a certain area of Angles Arc. That one particular one, which is the length of the country from side to side, um, in it, but it seems to have a focal point, which is an area on, on Angles Arc called Round Loaf, which is an old burial mound that hasn't been excavated at all. And there's arguments that it's not a burial mound, but from what I can see when I'm going to the area, you can see that it has been man-made. So there's summit there in the middle of this moorland, and it's right next to an area which is known as uh, the Devil's Dyke, which runs along the side of it and then further over you have Winter Hill and you've got other burial mounds on that side uh, there's one called Noon Hill uh, burial mound then there's Winter Hill burial mound just that side of that um, so there are quite a lot of ancient places around that area now Round Loaf in particular we have or I've come across now since 2012 up to now it's taken me all this time to find at least 20 different lines running off from that burial mound which all go up you know the, some of them go over to the east coast from the uh, some of them go up to Scotland um, we have some that go from from there to the Wirral and when you get to the Wirral there's there's uh, rock carvings which sort of uh, 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 finish that line uh, and in between all that you have springs popping up uh, and one particular line talking of springs um, I've termed the Ellen line because it seems to me that were along this line where there's uh, water springs popping up and burial mounds and stone standing stones and uh, I think there's one yeah there's a, a, a stone circle along that line but the churches that are on that line as well we come across three that called St Ellen the St Ellen's church and then it, end, it begins at a St Ellen's well and ends, and that's in Safton, and it ends over in St. Ellen's Well, uh, over in Yorkshire. 
uh, uh, that seems to have a correlation with water for some reason and this Ellen character who Ellen yeah we can say goes further back to Neolithic times when they used to follow the reindeer because Ellen is a goddess of the tracks, a goddess of the ways, which uh, is an antlered goddess who, seen, who was known to follow the, uh, the deer. Um, and I think there's a, a lot of people in this country who still follow um, Ellen, Ellen of the ways, uh, as an ant antler goddess, a lot of pagans who who still um, do rituals uh, for her um, and who, who sort of use her in the prayers when walking these lines. And yeah, she is associated with, the, with deer, which leaves the trackways. So I'm coming to the end of this uh, little walk now and I'm going to head back home because yeah, it's, it's not going to be long now before uh, I'm setting off on our little journey. Yeah, don't forget to subscribe if you already haven't and uh, like and share. And for anyone out there who's got accounts and stories and uh, have had anything unusual happening to them, uh, feel free to get in touch and uh, again thanks for watching and speak to you all soon